scared of selling, feel like you're terrible at it, then you're not special. Seriously, everybody thinks that they're not good at sales, but you're not as bad as you think. In this video, we're gonna go over seven tips to overcoming your fear of selling. If you stick with me until the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you how to get my sales jumpstart kit, which is gonna help you level up your sales and close more deals. I'm Will, and I've closed thousands of deals over the course of my sales career, as well as coached and mentored sales reps to bring in over a million in revenue in their first year of sales. So if you're excited to learn about these seven tips, hit that like button and let's get into it. As usual, feel free to jump around and review anything that we go over with these timestamps. The first tip is ask yourself where your impressions of sales comes from. We often associate used car salesmen or door-to-door -door salesmen from years ago. But the reality is that sales has changed a lot from those days. If we aren't aware of this, we can't actually begin to understand where our impressions come from. And as a result, we can't get woke about how we view sales. Tell me in the comments below what comes to mind when you think about where your impressions of sales comes from. The second tip I can give you is to reframe sales more as problem solving. If you think about sales simply as trying to understand more about the person you're trying to sell and what their motivations are, as well as what their needs are, you'll realize that it's more like a puzzle than it is necessarily climbing a mountain. The simple question that you're trying to answer is whether or not you're going to be able to provide a product or service that meets their need. Whenever I've trained and mentored sales reps in the past, we've first had to identify where our impressions of sales came from, and then we transitioned to talking about specifically how to provide value for our prospects. It's all about providing value to your prospects. It's always been helping these sales reps understand that sales is not so much about selling something onto somebody, so much as giving them value that they didn't have before. Which leads me to my third tip. Tip three is to forget your sales pitch. I know that you spent a ton of time memorizing the features and benefits of your product or service, but ultimately it doesn't matter. Instead of getting all hyped and nervous about your sales pitch, just focus on listening to your prospect. What are they telling you their needs are? What are they telling you their timeline is? And then go from there. Focus more on simply filling the gaps in your customer's education about your space, your product, or your service. Customers these days naturally are going to come to you with questions because we're in the time of an educated consumer in which we as buyers like to show up to a company's doorstep when we have done some preliminary research ourselves. One of the reasons why sales reps get so fearful of selling is because they've been rejected so many times when they're giving their pitch. So instead, don't focus on giving your pitch in the most traditional way. Instead, just sit back, listen to what your prospect has to say, and answer the question as to whether or not you can meet their needs. The fourth tip is to understand that sales is more about guiding than it is about convincing. If you're selling effectively, you're gonna quickly realize that you actually don't need to sell all that often. More often than not, the most effective sales questions are the ones that are all about your prospect. If you watch my prior video on the nine powerful sales questions to ask your prospects, you'll know that one of the favorite question stems that I like to ask goes along the lines of, tell me. Tell me about how this decision was made in the past. Tell me about what went well and what didn't go well when you last implemented a product like ours. Why does this work so well? Because we're simply trying to learn about their past experiences. We're not here to push anything onto them. We're simply trying to assess whether or not we can meet the needs that they have. Focus on helping your prospect answer whether or not you can help them and let them form their own opinions. We're more than halfway through our tips. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure you hit that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can get more sales tips like these every single week. My fifth tip is to make sure that you're keeping a log of your wins and your losses. Ultimately, you're gonna have a lot of both. So it's really important that you're taking each one in stride in terms of what you learn from each experience. Get a notebook or create a spreadsheet that essentially answers these core questions. What went well on this call? What didn't go well? And what would you have changed if you were to do that same call again? If you had a fear of selling in that call, why do you think you had that fear? And how would you overcome that fear if you were to replay that conversation again? 
This act of active reflection will help you overcome your fear of closing and start closing even more deals. My sixth tip is to start and end with value. If you're taking all of my prior tips to heart, then you know how important this is at this point. Pretty much what you wanna think about is how in every conversation, you can teach something new to your prospect or help them out in some sort of way. This could be something as simple as sharing a marketing asset, a sales asset, an educational resource, or even some case studies of some past successes your clients have had. What I've liked to do in the past is I like to record a personalized one minute video just checking in with these prospects and catching up on something that we talked about in our prior conversation. If you spend less time thinking about your prospects like numbers that help you reach your quota and more time of thinking of them as humans that are simply trying to solve problems, you will notice a big shift in terms of how you treat your prospects and how your prospects treat you. The reason why is because you're gonna become more and more outcome independent as to whether or not they use your product and service. And as a result, you're gonna be more focused and rooted in giving them an awesome sales experience. Tell me in the comments below what you like to share when you're trying to give value to your prospects. My seventh and favorite tip when it comes to overcoming your fear of selling is to simply treat your prospects more like they're really good friends. You wouldn't treat your really good friend poorly, and so don't treat your prospect poorly. Instead, have fun with them and think about ways to make your conversations much lower stakes than a typical sales conversation. By doing so, you're gonna be able to build rapport more quickly with your prospects, and as a result, they're gonna trust you more when it comes time to make a decision about your product or service. By making your prospects feel like a million bucks, they're gonna help you make a million bucks, but first you have to treat them like a really good friend. There are two big takeaways that I want you to remember from today's video. The first one is that overcoming your fear of sales starts with addressing your stereotypes around sales. You can't start to get better at closing and overcoming your fear of closing until you address why you don't like closing or the concept of sales in the first place. If you want a book recommendation, check out To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. It'll be a great way for you to bust the myths that you might have about sales. The second big takeaway is to remember to be value-driven as opposed to numbers-driven. When you put the needs of your prospects ahead of your own, you will quickly realize that it's much easier for you to build rapport and also have those closing sales conversations. Now it's your turn. Tell me in the comments below which tip you found most helpful in overcoming your fear of selling. If you want more tips like these, get my Sales Jumpstart Kit in the link in the video description below. In it, this free resource is gonna give you a ton of things to help you think about ways to improve your sales process. If you learned something new today or you found this video helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you take a second and hit that like button below. By doing so, you're gonna help more people discover this video and as a result, grow our community of amazing go-getters. Also, share this with anybody that you think might benefit from learning these seven best tips when it comes to overcoming your fear of sales. Lastly, since you're so far into this video, if you haven't already joined our community by hitting that subscribe button as well as that notification bell, you need to do so right now. It's free and you're gonna get new videos every single week that help you grow your business, get more customers, and hone your business acumen. That's it for this time though. I'll catch you guys next time when we go over some of the top qualities of the most successful salespeople that I know. In the meantime though, check out these videos that YouTube thinks you might like.